Good morning, Abnormal family. Uh, got one I want to share with you. I spoke with a guy on the phone, and uh, wow, if you all have panic attacks or anything like that, you may not want to listen to this encounter. This is a horrendous, gruesome, terrifying event that happened not far from my house at all. And, um, well, we're just going to get into it. His name, he gave me first and last name, but just to save him trouble, I'm just going to use his first name. His name's John. Uh, the date this incident happened was 9-9 of 2022, location, northeast Oklahoma. It's going to be a little ways from my house. I know the location. Suspect in this is a Bigfoot. The moon was a waxing gibbous on that date. Uh, he said it all started by knocking on the uh, on the house and pecking on his daughter's uh, bedroom. He said it got so bad she started sleeping with with us, and I honestly thought she was just using this as an excuse to be able to sleep beside us. He said it started getting old. But um, he remembered a video I had done where I asked parents to please listen to your children and, you know, they, they might really be seeing something. So he said, he uh, thought, okay, we're going to find out what's going on in there. We're going to get to the bottom of this one way or the other because she can't be sleeping by us every night. He says, my wife was putting laundry away late one night <clears throat> and it was in our daughter's room at around 11 p.m. Now, I would like to add, none of this started happening until the coal mine started digging for coal back behind our house, approximately a half a mile. They dig all day, and they run dozers at night. I don't know if it has anything to do with it, but this is when it started happening on our property. Anyways, while my wife was in my daughter's room, it was about 11 p.m., he says, that's when I heard her scream. He said, I grabbed my shotgun, which I have a 12 gauge, he says, I keep beside my chair, his rocking chair, and I ran to my daughter's room, which she's 10 years old. He said, that's when my wife said, I seen it, John. I said, what? She said, it's huge. Its eyes are huge, is all he said that she was really screaming. She described seeing a large creature with big eyes. And she said the eyes had huge whites around the eyes. But she said the eyes were glowing like a cat's eyes would. She said they had that glow to them, that green glow. And the creature, she said, was at the window in the room. And the window, he said, to the center of the window from the ground on his house is 12 and a half feet from the ground. He said, I knew my wife had seen something. I know my wife. And whenever she says she sees something, he says, I, I, you know, he believes her 100%. So he said, I decided that night to put my daughter in our room and I would sleep in our daughter's bed. He said, I stayed in her room that night with the shotgun beside the bed. I brought a large flashlight with me that I hid under my pillow so I would not have to leave the bed to turn on the light. At about 11.30 p.m., he said, I heard something at the window. I turned and lit the window up, and there it was, staring at me. Its top of its head was almost 12 and a half feet tall, according to the window. He said, I could see the white of his eyes. He had huge white eyes. They glowed like a cat's, but this time they were yellow. It had a humanish face, except it was kind of mixed with what I would call a monster. Something you would see off one of the old monster movies. It was humanish, but almost non-humanish. Hard to explain. Its bottom teeth came up past its upper lip, <clears throat> like a boar hog's would, kind of. It had large bottom teeth. That's when it covered its eyes, I'm guessing due to the flashlight I was shining through the window right into its face, and it let out a very deep roar. Not a growl, Mike. This was a roar. A roar that shook the house, the windows, the walls. A deep roar. I started punching the side of the... It, <laughs> it I said I. It started punching the side of the house, and it started whistling so loud. 
Mike, that is something I never expected it to do. I expected the roars, the screams, all the other things that everybody talks about hearing these things do when they're trying to scare you. But whenever it started whistling, now I know they whistle, Mike, but this thing started whistling uncontrollably. My wife and daughter screaming in the front room and the dog barking. We have a German Shepherd, Mike, that is very protective. We've had it for seven years. It was a very chaotic scene, Mike. The women were panicked, and there I was looking at it at the bedroom window. I fired through the window. Like so many people say in all of your videos, why didn't they shoot? Why didn't they shoot? Well, I did, Mike. I did not hesitate. I fired right through the window. I had put my light down to be able to grab the shotgun to fire through the window to do it. So I'm not sure if I connected, but it was a high brass turkey load that I keep in my shotgun with a super full choke. I fired from about eight foot away. The damage this should have done should have been dramatic. We did call the sheriff's department and the sheriff's deputies did arrive at the house. We did do a report. They did a, uh, a look around the house and everything and they did find a footprint by the window. This was a barefoot print. No shoe. You can see the toes very deep into the ground. And I told the deputy, I said, look, can you see that? And he said, yes, I see it. He called the sheriff, notified the sheriff, and asked him if he wanted him to photograph the evidence. The sheriff said, no, it is muddy, and it's probably somebody's footprint, a prowler's, that slid while trying to window peek. But he says, Mike, I don't think it was a prowler because this track was 22 inches long by 11 inches wide. That's a huge print. He says, the next day... I replaced the window with some plexiglass. I'd went to Lowe's and plexiglass seemed to be the cheaper option as I did not have the money at the time to replace the full window. It was quiet that night except the dog was barking all night, but nothing hit the house, no growls, no beating on the house, rather quiet night. But the next morning my daughter went outside to feed her rabbits and we heard her screaming, blood curdling scream. I grabbed my AR went running to my daughter, which was out in the yard by the rabbit pen. My wife in pursuit behind me. As we got to the rabbit pen, my daughter was shaking uncontrollably, crying. I'm talking huge tears, snotty nose kind of cry, Mike, screaming, trembling. My wife grabbed her, rushed her to the house, and whenever I looked in the rabbit cage, there it was. One of her little bunnies had been skinned perfectly. The skin was hanging on the side of the rabbit cage. But Mike, this was something that even shook me. Something I had never seen or even thought was possible. This little rabbit was hopping around in the cage with no skin on it. Whatever it was had skinned this rabbit and it had no skin. And it's hopping around in the cage. Three nights later, a neighbor's cat was placed on my wife's car right on the front windshield skinned with its head missing and we thought oh my god why would something cut something's head off but as we got to look and the cat's head was placed on my wife's antenna this was getting too much we called the sheriff again the sheriff arrived and of course blamed it on hoodlums in the neighborhood then a few days later I was taking out some scraps and I heard it whistle at me again. So again, I had been sleeping in my daughter's room whenever I heard a weird noise that same night that it was whistling at me, Mike. Called the sheriff's department. Sheriff's department arrived. They spotlighted and at this time they're starting to get frustrated with us and they're thinking it's nothing. I know how that goes. That happened to us at my granny's. We'd call the sheriff's department and it got to the point where they wouldn't even come out. In our county, guys, we have one deputy on duty a lot of times that covers the whole county. Anyways, he said, I heard a weird noise at the window, Mike. And whenever I looked at the window, it wasn't just the head I saw. It was two large hands, large fingernails as I shined the light to the window. This damn thing, Mike, was trying to lift the window. Yes, he was pushing, trying to raise the window. The plexiglass had bent in to where I could see outside through the sides of the glass. I freaked out. This was so, so traumatic to me. I am still having trouble with this. When I looked, I seen it again, this time, the huge wide eyes again, 
and this time it raised its eyebrows at me as it was trying to get through the window. I didn't bring my shotgun to the room that night. I brought my 357 Magnum. I fired it. It yelled. And this time I knew I hit it because the yell it made was a loud yell. But another weird thing, Mike. Another weird thing I've never heard before. It started using a weird language as if it was yelling at me or cussing me or something. I'm not sure what it was doing. But it was a language, and the way it talked, it reminded me of the old Indians as it yelled at me and as it talked, as how they, the Indians have low voices and how they talk and the way it talked. And it ran off. It had been quiet then for at least a week after I had done that. I figured it had probably left and died, or I'd heard it enough that it wouldn't come back. The dog was barking. It was late. And we had all returned to our own bedrooms without any trouble at all. It had been very quiet. And as I was sleeping, my daughter yells at me that the dog was barking, so I got up out of bed to check the dog. At our back door, we do have a doggy door that the dog can go in and out as he pleases. He has done this for all the time we've owned him. I hear this thump outside. Not thinking much about it. It sounded like something fell. It was windy outside. I do have tools and stuff as I am a laborer. And I figured one of them had fell over as they had many times in the past. As I'm by the door, of course, the dog comes up, sticks his head through the door at me as he's done a million times. And he's sitting there looking at me and I'm telling him, come on in, Buster, come on in. The dog would not come in. And I kept telling him, come here, come here. And as I got to looking at my dog, Mike, I noticed he did not look right. He wasn't blinking. His mouth wasn't moving. The dog looked as if it was terrified. As I walked over toward the door and knelt down to see the dog, the dog came further through the door and I noticed that his fur was black. So I figured he'd been out rolling in the mud again and here it was going to be my wife yelling at me again for letting the muddy dog in. But at that time the door busted open as something was leaning against it. The chain lock at the top stopping the door from coming all the way open. I saw a black figure through the crack of the door. And as I looked, the head of my dog dropped onto the kitchen floor from the hand of this creature. It then took off running off the porch. I ran inside. We called the, the sheriff's department again, this time reporting that it had killed one of the animals and tried to get into the house. As we're waiting on him to come, we hear a loud banging at the back door like it's about to beat the door down. We're terrified. Here I am. I have my 357. My wife has my shotgun. She's a very good shot. She's an avid hunter, as am I. We're sitting there protecting my daughter. We have her in the corner of the room. We have a room in our house that has no windows. That is the room we retreated to. It was our barricade. All the thumping and beating we heard finally came to an end. The sheriff's department arrived, and as we went to the back of the house, we found what the beating was. My dog had been dismembered and tore apart and threw and hit the back of my window. My back door was covered in blood. It had threw parts of my dog into the house hitting the door with parts of the dog. Fish and game arrived for approximately a week. They placed cameras all over my property. There was a helicopter from the National Guard that assisted. They were looking for a honey bear. I told them this was no damn bear. They wouldn't have it, Mike. They told me they'd had these encounters many times. It was a bear. There was some shooting a couple of nights after they had arrived. The game wardens came as fast as they left, or left as fast as they came. And they removed all their equipment, no more choppers. And I was told by the, uh, I guess you would call the boss. He came up and he said, We believe we took care of the problem. We killed a large honey bear just a few hundred yards from your house. The coal mine probably stirred him up in the caves if they're digging through. I don't think you're going to have any more trouble. Of course, we sure hope you don't. Because your land connects to government property. And if this continued to happen, we would probably end up buying out your property. I told him that would never happen, that this property was owned by my family and had been passed down for generations and we were farmers. He said they didn't care. They would buy my land out if this continued to happen for the safety of the family and we would be relocated. Mike, this, this felt to me like, if things don't stay quiet, we're going to lose our place. I guess it's just up to us and our neighbors now that decided we've had enough of it and we now have a hunting party together with our hunting dogs and everything, except for this time, it won't be coons. But so far, so good. It's been quiet. All the neighbors have been quiet. It seems that they have went in and they remedied the situation. They removed something, Mike. 
but I don't believe it was a honey bear. And I don't believe that was all of them down in there, as we're still hearing howls deep down in the gully. I will keep in touch with you, Mike, if anything happens. I appreciate you for putting this out there, and we appreciate your channel. Think of that, guys. That's terrifying. Uh, you definitely have something that's, like we talked about, uh, angry. This thing is vicious. It's evil. Uh, be very careful. Be in at night. Don't leave your daughter outside during the day at all. I usually say dusk and dawn. And I wouldn't at all right now. Not not right now. Not with that happening. Uh, matter of fact, I would tell your wife and daughter not to even like go far from the house. Um, I would wait and see. I hope you have no more trouble. I hope it's not a clan of them and they're going to try to take revenge for what's happened. But uh, that's the best I can give you. Just keep your head on a swivel. Be safe. Do not be put in any kind of a vulnerable position. And uh, get you some cameras. Get you some yard lights. Get you some uh, motion detector lights. Uh, get you another dog. Keep it in the house. Don't let it outside. Uh, you need something to alert you. It don't matter if it's a little dog. As long as it alerts you. And uh, you're just going to have to bunker down right now. That's all I know to tell you. Get everything done in the daytime. Bunker down at night. That's what my granny had to do. And uh, see how it goes from there. You definitely keep me uh, informed. And I appreciate y'all watching. Like I said, this is one of the crazier ones I've covered. And uh, I don't know. That scared the hell out of me. Keep your head on a swivel. Until next time, guys.